welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be talking about fragrances that I uh, used to feature a lot in my videos. I raved about these fragrances, but then all of a sudden, I don't feature them in my videos anymore. But I still love and adore them. So I got this video idea from Arlene or Delicious Delights. I'm going to link her video down below, so go and check that video out. So I'm going to start it off with a floral, fruity, amber, vanilla. This is chopard's cashmere so i decided to get this fragrance blind by it because people said that this one smelled like peach and apricot pie and when i started out the idea of perfumes having gourmand or edible notes it was very new to me and i was really interested i was really curious and for some reason i wanted to smell like a pie so i got it so this perfume was added to a lot of people's collections super fast but it also left super fast as well. But for me, it stayed because this is a gem, in my opinion. Does it smell like a peach and apricot pie? No, it doesn't. You don't end up smelling like a bakery when you wear this. It does have strong notes of peach and apricot and mango and a lot of other floral, fruity notes, but this is, in essence, an amber vanilla scent. I think this also has sandalwood, it has coconut, it has a ton of notes. It is a heavy dose of that classic timeless vanilla that some may find um, vintage-y, that some may find mature, but for me, I find it timeless and classic. So it's that base of vanilla and ambers with a ton of floral and fruity notes. So I still love this, Chopard's Casimir. Another one that gives off that emotion-centered kind of a scent is Garland's Ancelon's EDT. The EDP was everywhere. I think it was early 2020. I don't know why. I think it's just because of like bigger YouTube channels talked about it and then everyone loved it as well and everyone talked about it. But for me, I got this because of a description that this one smells like, you know, fairy dust. And it really is a fairy dust kind of a scent profile for me because when I smelled this it immediately transported me to when I was a little girl it's not a scent profile that I can relate to it's not something that I have personal memories or you know like experiences attached to it I haven't smelled it before but somehow the smell of iris and violets and a very sweet raspberry reminds me of when I was three or four years this old. This is a fragrance that I tend to reach for when I feel homesick or when I feel physically ill. This is a scent that helps me feel calm and just like with Chopard's Gas Mirror, this one also has that classic sort of a scent profile. You know it just makes me feel really good even though I don't really wear it a lot. Another one is a very hyped up fragrance and i think this one is still a talked about fragrance up until now this is aqualina's pink sugar and i have very little left i haven't reached for this one actually the past year because i've been focusing on the other fragrances that i have this is a very sweet con candy scent that almost went you know, downhill for me when I blind bought it. Somehow I expected it to smell like strawberries and con candy, very sweet and candy-like, but um, it's not. This one is actually more complicated than, you know, the simple bottle and the name Pink Sugar. Yes, you do get con candy, you get sweet sugary notes, but it also has some spicy notes, some florals, and a very strong citrus. This is Valentino's Donna Aqua. This one leaned very floral on my skin. This has strong yellow florals in the body, but but it also has notes like almond on top and it has vanilla so it's still very sweet but it's a tropical floral kind of a scent and when i first started um, buying perfumes or adding perfumes to my collection i was more into fruity body mist type of scent profiles and this gorgeous tropical floral vanilla scent was an new scent profile for me but i ended up loving it i didn't really put a good dent in this one because this is a discontinued scent i don't know what it is with you know my relationship with discontinued scents is that i just end up not using the fragrance because i don't want to empty the bottle just in case i miss it but this is so good that i want to use it like all the time so i think i'm gonna have to use it more even though it is a fragrance that i can no longer get another garland fragrance this is black perfecto i got this because of the notes like cherry and leather and almond and rose and i was just slowly trying to understand almond as a perfume note and i was also intrigued by the leather note that's in here and cherry as well it may not have been that cherry 
pie filling or that syrupy cherry that I expected but this one is really beautiful I really loved it it was a successful blind buy I think I'm halfway in my bottle and then just like with um, Donna Aqua I stopped using it because I'm not sure is this a discontinued fragrance I just I just I think I heard this is a discontinued scent and one of those like I should have bought a bigger bottle kind of a regret so Black Perfecto La Petite Robe Noir by Garlon Fancy by Jessica Simpson this is my second bottle so obviously I still love it I wear it a lot and um this was one of those very first um blind buys or those very first gourmand scents this is super strong on the sweet notes it's all about fruits it's all about the caramel here it can be too much of everything but this is the level of too much that i love so fancy by jessica simpson then i have sophia by sophia vergara okay so this one is always described as a coco mademoiselle kind of a scent profile and when people said that i was like what does that mean because i I haven't smelled Coco Mademoiselle, but I was really drawn to the notes like black currant, and this one has rose. Everyone seemed to love the fragrance, and it was always a successful blind buy that I decided to, you know, okay, I'm just gonna get it. I'm gonna try it. Maybe I'll fall in love with it, and I did. I'm almost out of my bottle, but honestly, like if I'm out of it, I still love it. I'm not gonna be repurchasing it. So, Sophia. This is Mambo by Liz Claiborne. Mambo for her. I got this because of Kayla's perfume. She goes by Kitchy K now. And it was notes like ginger and mango and hibiscus. It really made me want to get this scent. This has that 90s kind of feel and even the bottle shape. You know, the look of the bottle, it looks like a lava lamp. So it gives off that 80s, 90s sort of a vibe. And the scent profile also gives off that 90s feel, even though this was released in the early 2000s. So it's a tropical, spicy, fruity, floral kind of a scent. Um, prominent white florals in the middle, yellow and white florals. And then this is one of the very first like spicy fragrances or like the very first fragrance that I have with ginger in it. So Mambo for her by Liz Claiborne. Very affordable fragrance, super long lasting. I love that. I have one from Givenchy and this is Hot Couture EDP. Um, it was a description of this one smelling like smoke and sexiness that made me get this. Um, this is one of the pricier um, blind buys that I did. And I, oh, this one just blows my mind. This one really surprised me because for someone that just used body mists and just starting out in perfumes, this was an immediate love for me, a love at first sniff. Oh my goodness, I should wear this more. I don't know why I haven't been reaching for this one. I guess because just like with Black Perfecto and everything, I'm scared that this is a discontinued kind of face scent and you know, I don't want to empty my bottle. I have a huge 100 mil. I can use this one for years, but oh, the air, it smells so good. The spiciness and that smokiness comes from black pepper. And this one has that strong raspberry as well. So it's Gorgeous. And then talking about new perfume notes or scent accords, I wanted to try something with tea in it. And this one I got because of Veronica Says and I'm almost out. Oh my god. I said I would be repurchasing this one when I'm out of my bottle and I guess I just chickened out and was like, I don't want to use up this bottle because it's so cute. This is still by Jennifer Lopez and I have a 30 ml bottle. Um, I think yeah, I think I will still repurchase this one when I'm out of it. Oh, uh, this one just projects. It lasts super long. It's fresh. This one has rice and tea. It's green, citrusy, crisp, and clean. It's a scent profile that is also new to me. Um, I was more um, into fruity, sweet fragrances, and having something clean and crisp and green was something new, and I immediately fell in love with this one. I need to wear this more. This is actually in my um, perfume rotation, my perfume tray, because I have to wear this more, and I think for sure, yes, I will still repurchase this one. Still, repurchase still when I'm out of it. This fragrance was everywhere because of many hmm, divided opinions, but for me, this is everything. This is her by Zadig and Voltaire. So the story with this one, I got it because people hated this fragrance. People described this one as, you know, smelling like vomit or sick 
or it smells like sweaty sandalwood. And I was like, I guess it's just that adventurous side of me that, you know, I just want to experience like if I do smell vomit in it or if I do smell sweat in it or whatever. You guys, if you have been with me for a while, you guys know how much I love this. I have a separate video. I think for most of the fragrances here, I have separate reviews on, but this one is amazing. Like this was one of those super successful blind buys. And this was also a sort of a pricey blind buy for me. It's notes like chestnut and cream and vanilla in here that makes this one amazing. I am still in love with this one. This is one of those fragrances where you don't need to spray a lot because this lasts forever and it projects. I featured this like in every uh -huh. video that I film after getting it because I considered that one as like a Paula or a me kind of a scent. I still love that. I loved it. I raved about it and I still adore it. Pure Excess for her by Paco Rabanne. I first got Olympia by Paco Rabanne, Olympia Aqua. Olympia ADP didn't work for me. Olympia Aqua was okay, but I had other fragrances that give off that similar scent profile. I wasn't really sure about this fragrance because I knew that Paco Rabanne had this like DNA in their sense. But my goodness gracious me, I really loved it. It was the popcorn note that really got me. So this has strong peach and coconut and florals, yellow florals, but it was the popcorn that really made me interested it's in it. It's just like with this is her super long lasting projects. Oh, I, I wore this one actually as my scent of the day for two days straight, a couple of days ago. This is the perfect season to wear this. I still get the popcorn. I know a lot of people don't get popcorn in here, but I get it. It isn't as long lasting as, for example, the popcorn-ish scent in salt caramel or, you know, what about pop? But this one is beautiful as well. Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. I was able to sample it because of a gift from Francis or Happiness Sparkles. This is a super strong white floral. It focuses basically on musk, lavender, and white florals. One of the first like clean white crisp fragrances that I added with, you know, again, big centers on white florals. This is Rare Tiffany by Afnan. I still love this one. And I'm lucky enough to have a backup bottle because of my perfume fairy, Stephanie. So I'm not going to be scared using this one or spraying this one. But actually, this is a scent that I can easily get here. It's not a discontinued scent. But this is one of those super classy, bougie smelling scent in a tropical vacation sort of way. This is a scent that I always spray like in my room or in my pillow. And I just want to invite of myself and my house with this scent because it's so good it's not like a house scent where it smells like a candle but i just want to smell like a holiday and this is how this one smells like to me rare tiffany by afnan this is ysl mon prairie couture and i was testing fragrances um, in the perfume department and i smelled this one somebody sprayed this fragrance and i was like i don't know what perfume that was i couldn't find the person that sprayed it but i had to look for it and it happened to be by the ysl corner and i wanted to spray black opium and the original opium and all of that and i saw this bottle so this has a lot of flankers and i remember seeing it in um, you know a number of youtube videos so i decided to smell it i smelled the edp and then the edt and i came across this one and when i realized that this was the scent that I smelled in the air. I bought it immediately. Usually when I go to the perfume department, I would spray a fragrance, walk around for 30 minutes or an hour, and then go back or go back the next day. But this one, I bought it. This was my one of my very first love at first sniffs. And one of those fragrances that I decided to buy retail price. So yes, I paid a lot for this fragrance, but... It's really worth it because I love the smell. I even wore this one one time, high heat of summer, I wore it. And I, my husband and I went to the store and I was like, who smells really good? And then when I realized when I got in the car, it was me because I sprayed this one. That was a very good perfume day and I love this fragrance. I still love it. And I think I featured this one in my you know, like perfume capsule or 10 fragrances for life sort of videos. And um, yeah. This is one of my like signature scents. I also bought this one retail because of perfume reviews. This was a very hyped up like 
gourmand fragrance floral gourmand and i already knew that i would love this because i love midnight rose from this same house in the same collection so this is a 30 ml i have very little left this is one of those fragrances where you don't need to spray a lot but i think you know i just wanted to savor this bottle and this was actually my perfume project pan like pro project perfume pan, whatever it's called but um yeah i chickened out just like it's still and i didn't want to empty my bottle this one is from the house tiziana terenzi and this is deluxe very first niche purchase and very first expensive af perfume they added to my collection i bought this one here in our website local website it's like a it's like the Icelandic version of fragrance.net i got it because of the reviews people said that this one smelled like you know roses vani or um intense cafe and i was actually um torn between this one and intense cafe and i think i sample i do i do have a sample of intense cafe i think but i'm happy that i got this because i thought my thought process was okay if i'm gonna buy something that's way above my budget i'm gonna buy something that i know I'm not going to regret. I don't know why I even thought of that because it was like, oh, it's a Tiziana Terenzi fragrance. I might as well get that because everyone's talking about Montel. So I wanted to be different. I got this. And luckily, this one worked for me. This is really nice. It's like a honeyed sugared rose with some coffee. Coffee is not the main note in here, but it's mostly the rose, like a sugared jammy rose. And it's mostly like a date night scent or like a... I don't know, party kind of a scent, you know, a dinner scent, because it's very formal, in my opinion. So that's Deluxe. So that is it for today's video, you guys. Thank you for watching today's content, for spending your time watching my video. These are the fragrances that I no longer really talk about in my channel, but I still love them and I still have them in my collection. Once again, thank you so much for watching today's video. Have fun, much love, stay safe, and see you in my next videos.